right, so this is part three of the Manipulation Artwork Remix project for graphic design. And I have done my plane, I have my background here, and now I'm going to add a hat. And in this case, the hat might be a little crooked on his head, but I actually think that would be kind of fun. So I am going to just attempt to select the hat and not the rest of what's going on here. So the hat is what I care about. Um, so again, there are lots of ways to do this. You can do this in, in different, using different tools, whatever you prefer. Um, so something like quick selection might work. We'll see if it works somewhat, maybe. Getting there. Maybe not. We might be better off with just using the magnetic lasso to go around as carefully as we can. And if it selects anything I don't want, I can just use the eraser tool for that. I'm just gonna go along the front here. Oops, see if it'll bring it down because I want the edge of that hat. Kind of just a rough cut. So there's really no right or wrong way here. Whatever works, whatever you prefer. All right, control C. Whoops. Oh, that's why it was having issues. <laughs> Let's do that again. I was on the wrong layer. It's like, man, it's just really not connecting very well. All right, there we go. Trying to get that area. And then click. Control C, Control V. So now that hat is on a separate layer, I'm gonna turn this layer off just to keep it in case I need it again. Let's say I make a mistake or erase something, then at least I have it. Okay, so obviously the hat is way too big um, and it does need some touching up. But be So before I actually resize it, I am going to zoom in quite a bit here. And I'm just gonna to touch it up with my basic eraser and make sure you have Usually a hard round eraser will be good. I'm gonna make sure it's small enough. That's probably good. Just to kind of go around, touch up areas that need touching up. And this just takes some patience, honestly. This is actually not too bad though. And you'll find that images that have a stark contrast between the subject matter and the background that's just going to help you out. There's that. And this funky background here. I might even be able to use the magic eraser if I lower the tolerance. Let's see if that works. Yeah, not too bad. Mm. I'll touch that up with the eraser now. So this project is a great way to kind of sum up a lot of the tools where you've been using and learning in Photoshop or Photo P. So um, this is kind of a summative assessment basically. Um, rather than a test or anything, I, I want to see all of the tools that you understand and that you know how to to put it all together in one one piece. So it's similar to like the fruit on the face, except you are doing a lot more. It's a little more complicated than just sticking some things together. All right, Control T is going to allow me to resize that and I can also rotate it. So if I need to click and drag and rotate, I can certainly do that. Let's see if I can get it as close as possible to like a natural fit. I kind of want the bill here to go against the side of his face. So same with this here. Still seems a little on the small side. So I'm just going to see if I can make it a little wider. <laughs> Maybe not. Let's just see if I can. Still seems a little too high. All right. That's not too bad, I think. And you can move things down too. 
It actually might be a little closer so it's on his ear there. Okay, and then click enter on the keyboard when you're happy. And this actually looks pretty good. I think I'll still do a filter on it just to kind of, again, give it that painted quality. Um, I might try a different filter than the one I used before rather than the texture. Um, not that. Let's see if I can do the brush strokes again. Trance. Not too bad. We don't want it too bright though. Not too smooth either. Hmm. We don't want it super dark though. Actually, that looks kind of close to what we were doing. So it was accent <clears throat> accented edges. Click OK. So just a subtle change there, but I think that makes it look a lot more like it's been painted in um, into, into the work, which, which I like. Okay, so next up is adding our attribution. I'm going to delete this layer because I know I don't need it anymore. Oh, actually, before that, I'm going to do another shadow. Um, so I'm going to use this layer here. I forgot I have to add a shadow to his face. So let's scroll in here. I actually might do a new... Well, no, that'll work. I think that layer will because it's right below the hat. So let me label that. That's why it's always good to label layers. It's easy to get confused. Okay, go back to, to the uh, brush tool here. I'm actually going to make this brush a little larger. And I don't think I have to do too much of a selection here because I am going to just draw this in, basically. And this layer already had 55% opacity. So I can just kind of go in. I just want it to look a little more natural. So definitely darker here. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. We'll lower the size a little bit here. Get his ear. Cool. All right, I like that much more natural now so just that subtle you know simple shadow man you can get a lot of mileage out of that all right now we're going to add attribution and the important thing for attribution again is to uh, choose a readable font and make sure it's small enough i usually will put it in the lower right or left hand corner um, right hand is is definitely more traditional and you want to keep it on the small side so i'm going to go all the way down to like let's say 10 here and I'm going to select a font that I like. I have News Cycle, which is actually probably my favorite font right now. Um, that is an open source font. Um, it's not on Adobe Fonts. You actually have to download it. But any kind of readable font, usually a sans serif is a good choice. So that's um, easily readable. And we'll probably do this in white. So I'm going to click on white. I'm going to go over to my Google Docs and I'm just going to copy that will go into my text layer here and control v okay and then just put that there and let's see what it looks like not bad okay so we can still read it but it's small we just don't want the emphasis to be on the on the words here i'm gonna go back to the other one i used same exact thing control c and i can use my text tool so just put it right underneath. I'm going to do these together. Awesome. And you can decide if you want it to be like left justified, right justified, or center. I'm going to actually do center here. All right, so we can read this just fine. And I'm actually going to lower the opacity just a little bit on that text to just blend it in a little more so that we can still read it but that it's not as much emphasis. So this is kind of like, you know, the afterthought, like, okay, you see the work and then, oh, I want to see who did it. And then you can see the attribution there. Um, now, before I save, there is one thing that is missing. And that is, I want to tell the world that I did this, <laughs> that I made the work. Because right now it just says, okay, these are the images, but it's not saying who the actual designer was. So I'm going to go into this text 
whoops, not do a new text one. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type whatever you want. Give it a title. Um, maybe I'll call it American Gothic in Flight. Very whimsical. Okay, I'll say by Bailey Quam. And then it's always good practice to put the year. So I'll do 2020. Drag that up a little more so I can still see everything. Awesome. So I have a title, I have my name, I have my attribution, and we are all set to save. So file save as in Photoshop or Photopea. And we're going to change this to JPEG. I'm going to give it a better name. I'm going to just say American Gothic in Flight. Save it somewhere you will remember it. Make sure it's high quality. So a 12, that's usually going to be the best case. Click OK. And then you are going to upload that to Google Classroom. So this is your final piece, your final work, your final manipulation. So if we go back to Google Classroom, you're going to go ahead and add it, um, upload it, and that is due by Friday, April 17th. So that is a little over a week from today. And as a bonus, if you would like to do some extra credit, there's this kind of cool thing um, going on right now called the Gettys Museums Challenge. Um, the link is here, or no, it's not on there. I didn't put it on yet. I'll have to add it quick. That's okay. Um, Getty Museum Challenge. Sorry if you can hear jingling in the background. It's just my dog. He's like super stir crazy. <laughs> All right. So that is not the one I wanted. <laughs> um, shoot. Well, that's okay. I'll find the one and post it in there. Um, so essentially the Getty Museum is challenging people in quarantine to recreate works of art, famous works of art, um, using photography. So using themselves or uh, using props, using pets even. Um, it's very, very popular on social media right now. So it could be kind of fun to try it out, even something like that, which I think is hilarious. So, you know, you can do abstract work. It doesn't have to be you. Grab blankets, you know, find a piece that you think you could recreate. This one is a little too far-fetched for me. I don't know. It seems a little lazy. But something like that, you know, it's just kind of funny. Like you're doing a parody of a famous work of art. And that is optional, so that's not required, but if you feel like you want more of a challenge, you want to get a few extra credit points, kind of like enrichment, um, go ahead and, and make something and take a photo of it, upload it to this assignment. So if you already submitted, you just click unsubmit and then add that photo and then submit again. And then you can also involve some siblings or other family members as well. So this is a great, a great project overall to just kind of review what we've learned in Photoshop before we move on to animation um, and to kind of just get a, a sense or I guess just review a lot of what we've done because for some of you, you haven't used Photoshop for a couple of weeks and, and it's easy to forget. And so this is, this is wonderful for, for that. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email me. Um, you can also comment on Google Classroom here and I will get back to you um, as quickly as I can. Um, otherwise, go ahead and um, enjoy the rest of your day. And just remember that April 17th is the deadline for this project. Thanks for watching.